In this tutorial, I will be talking you through uh, some of the skills that you'll need to do the strip board circuit design. Uh, as you read through the preamble, it's talking about uh, the fact that uh, at home you wouldn't actually have the, the sort of normal style boards that we use. Uh, for example, uh, the last project you would have done right at the end of last year, in year seven, you'd have made the um, door buzzer. So here's an example of a uh, printed circuit board. However, if you were at home and you wanted to do, build the same kind of thing, you can buy all the components. If you went to um, a shop like Maplin, you can find this stuff called Vero board. Okay. Now, obviously, before you do that, you need to design out what you were actually going to make. If you click on the link here or go to, uh, sorry there, um, it will take you to this program, or if you go to desktop, it's called DIY LC, which is Layout Creator. Okay, this is the program we will be using. If we go to Boards, and across the far end, you'll see the one we use is called Vero. So click on there, and I can bring that into the, the work area. Now you'll see when I click, it gives me two green dots. Uh, these allow me to be able to uh, make it smaller or to be able to make it bigger or to make it sort of change shape okay there's all sorts of different ways of doing now ideally for each of the three challenges that you do you'll do a kind of big board version i.e with no changes at all and then you'll make a second version where you try and make it as small as you can okay so let me talk about why the differences in size the Vero board is made up of these strips of copper. So if I pass electricity into this hole here, it, electrons will flow all the way along that as long as they've got somewhere to go. So let's have a look at an example. Um, if I go to recently used or connectivity, I can find there's these uh, connecting wires. So I'm just going to grab one of those and connect it into there. Okay, some of the rules of using this, when you click in, you can only use one hole per component. So that now has been filled up there. So AQ has been filled by that wire there. So if I grab another one, okay. Uh, so I now imagine the electrons flying through here. However, they can't go anywhere. Unless the electrons have got somewhere to get back to the other end, they won't flow. Okay, now how we're going to get them from there to there is by making our circuit. Okay, so for example, I'm just going to use the um, door buzzer that you were aware of. Okay, but it'll have all the same kind of elements that you'll be using. Uh, this uses a transistor, two resistors, and a buzzer. Okay, so if I go to the program and have a look along the top, what have we got? Uh, so I'm going to need to use um, resistors. Okay, the resistors are here. Now, just word of warning with these. If I put the resistor in there, so I'm going to put the resistor in there. Okay, I can uh, add the resistor like that. So you can see, imagine it going in that hole there, and you would solder it the other side, and it goes through here, and you'd solder it on there. Okay, so the electrons could now get onto f through there along this rail. Again, they're still not actually flowing because they've not got anywhere to go. So I'm just going to grab, for ease's sake, uh, an LED. Okay, so that's LED there, and if I click that one in there, and then put the click where the end is, that would now actually work. Okay, because if I imagine the electrons would go through there, they have to go through this bit here, they then have to go through that bit there, and then they have to go through there. Okay, now word of warning, some of the mistakes that can be easily made um, is if you decided to go that way. Okay, now if you imagine if you had your circuit that way, um, that is not going to work because what would happen the electrons would come along here and because this is all connected they would actually just flow around there on the board without actually going through the resistor because it'd be easier for them okay so that there um, would probably blow up your LED because there'd be so much uh, charge going through there without actually being slowed by the resistor okay now why earlier I was talking about the fact that you need to make two versions, okay? So some of the two versions would be, okay, this would be like a kind of, if I just move that down, this would be using a lot of the board, okay? I've got all this copper here, and as you can see, um, it's it's not cheap, it's quite expensive, this stuff, okay? So if we can make it smaller and get more and more of our little projects out of one board, all for the better.
Okay, so and remember the, the three projects that you've got to make are the um, this kind of LED torch. Okay, and it says you can get it down to a single six by one strip. So there's a little bit of a challenge there. The second one is making a parallel, so three resistors, three LEDs. Okay, and this final one is using a night light. Okay. So that's your, that's your challenges. And then obviously for the platinum is to have a go at making what's called a 555 five, five timer, which is tricky. And that's why it's the platinum. Okay. So let's go back to where we were. Now that's using as much board as possible. So I could say, okay, that's my, um, that's my uh, big board version. Okay. So if none of money was no expense, and I was just, uh, okay. But I could do that same circuit. Okay, if I think about being able to actually move these across, okay, so I could bring another board in over here. Okay, and let's shrink this right down and see how small we can actually go. So I think about the wires. I need one wire in there and one wire out, coming out of the way. Okay, so I've already got those two done. I've now got these other four connections to get in there. Can I get those four connections in these four connections here? This might be a little bit tricky. Let's have a look and see what I can do. So with a resistor, okay, I can go from there because I can't use the same one. Okay, and I can maybe go like that. Now, I'm just going to make it a little bit bigger. Okay, because what happens is... Um, it tends to make the resistor actually stand on end, which looks a little bit odd and not kind of how we'd actually use it. So there you go. That's probably the minimum you can get with that. Okay. Now, what's going to happen though, by putting that across there, is I've kind of wasted all these holes here, all this copper here, and all these connections here because it's just going to go through there and through there. But what I can do is if I use the break tool, which is this red dot here, I can actually break that up into two sections. So what I could do is if I put a break in there and then another break in, let's do it straight underneath. Okay. Now what's going to happen is that the electrons are going to go through there to there. Okay. If I can then, um, use the uh, LED and somehow move it from there so actually can I go I could move that up the way okay so it's got they've got to it's a break there so it has to go through there okay so the electrons have got to go through there but now they're on this little rail here I can now put the LED and connect it from there back to there okay so if you imagine that there Obviously, that's getting a, a little bit tight there in terms of space. Um, I'll have to be quite careful with my soldering, but I've made that, made that, brought that right in there. Okay. Now, when you screenshot that, you may need to do a kind of one version showing it like that, and then another version just lifting the components off so I can see that the brakes are there. Okay. So for the challenges, you need to make a simple, um, uh, that circuit there. So it's an LED and a resistor. The second one, uh, two versions obviously, and then two versions of the parallels, and then two versions of the night light. Okay, good luck.